Sometimes you can pinpoint exactly when a legend enters the public awareness. Someone writes and publishes something in one of those true tales of terror magazines or books. A story of a haunting makes the news. Or more recently, something is posted on Twitter or Facebook or other social media. We've dealt with some examples of this here before. Remember the tumbling coffins of Barbados, for which there seems to be zero documentary evidence, but was written up as true in a book called Transatlantic Sketches by James Alexander. Likewise, another one is the story of Lord Dufferin and the Man in the Garden. This one has a very certain provenance, which is Lord Dufferin himself, who seemed to enjoy nothing more than terrifying the absolute shit out of his friends with the story over a glass of cognac. One of the scariest ghost stories, though, seems to have no certain date of origin. It appears to have been built by accretion. It's the tale of the most haunted house in London, number 50 Berkeley Square. The house itself, which was real enough, was built in the late 18th century. It looks innocent enough from the outside. It became the residence of Prime Minister George Canning, which gives it some historical gravitas right from the beginning. But over time, its ownership descended the socio-economic ladder. And by the late 1800s, it had fallen into serious disrepair. At some point, the house got the reputation for being haunted. Apparently, it's the top floor that's said to be the worst, haunted by the ghost of a young woman who committed suicide by flinging herself out of a third-floor window. It's also supposed to be haunted by the ghost of a young man, who for some reason his family locked in the attic, feeding him through a slot in the door until finally he went mad and died. Whatever the truth of the suicide of the young woman and the tale of the unfortunate young man, it's true that the neighbors began to look askance at the house. This happened during the last two decades of the 19th century, and that's when the legends really took off. The earliest definite account of the haunting came from George Baron Littleton. A friend of his had challenged him to spend the night in the attic in 1872. He saw, he said, an apparition that appeared to him like a brown mist. He had a gun with him and he fired at it. The next morning he found no trace of what he'd shot at, only a hole in the wall and the spent shotgun shell. Littleton himself committed suicide four years later by throwing himself down the staircase of his London home. Seems an inefficient way to do it. Some people said that he never recovered from the fright he'd received that night in number 50, Barclay Square. In 1879, Mayfair ran a piece about the place, recounting the episode with Lord Littleton and his unfortunate subsequent suicide. It said that a maid who had been sent up to the attic to clean it had seen something and then gone mad. This prompted a skeptic named Sir Robert Warboys, who was described as a notorious libertine rake and scoffer, to decide that he could handle anything that showed up, and he too asked to spend a night in the attic. The owner himself elected to stay downstairs, which says something in and of itself. Warboys went up to the attic, and they rigged up a bell so that if anything untoward happened, Warboys could attract attention. Around midnight, the owner heard the frantic ringing of the bell and ran upstairs just in time to hear a gunshot. When he got there, he found Warboys propped up against the wall, dead with a ghastly expression on his face, Again, there was a bullet hole in the wall, but nothing else there in the way of evidence of what he might have shot at. Apparently, whatever the thing was, it vanished. According to the legend, the house was left empty after that, because no one could be found to rent it. This is why it was unoccupied when two sailors from Portsmouth, Edward Blunden and Robert Martin, came upon the house one foggy night when they'd been unable to find lodging elsewhere. They were awakened in the wee hours by a misty something that tried to strangle Martin, Terrified, he got up and ran, thinking his buddy was right behind him. It was only when he got outside that he realized that Blunden hadn't followed him. So, courageously, he went back in the house and found Blunden still there in the attic with his neck broken. What's interesting about this is that after the Mayfair piece, the legend kind of died down. It's still called the most haunted house in London and figures prominently on London ghost tours. In 1937, it was purchased by Mag's antiquarian book dealers, and since then, no one has reported seeing any ghosts. And it's been pointed out that the story The Haunters and the Haunted by Edward Bulwer-Lytton, published in 1859, bears a striking resemblance to the tale of the unstable Lord Littleton and what happened afterward. In my opinion, the whole legend seems to be made up from top to bottom. There's no evidence that any paranormal stuff ever occurred. As far as Sir Robert Warboys, he only seems to occur in connection with the legend itself, I did a fairly extensive search trying to find any other evidence of him, and he just simply doesn't seem to exist. As far as the two sailors from Portsmouth, well, that has about as much credence as someone saying, oh yeah, my aunt's second cousin's gardener saw it. And as far as Littleton, as I pointed out, 
he doesn't seem to have been very stable to start with. But you have to admit, it's a hell of a scary tale. I think one of the most terrifying things about it is you never actually get to see the Phantom's face. As Stephen King pointed out in his wonderful analysis of horror fiction called Dans Macabre, sometimes leaving the door shut is actually scarier than opening the door and seeing what's behind it. So even though I'm not buying that it's really haunted, it does make a great story. And you can bet that the next time I'm in London, number 50 Barclay Square is going to be on my itinerary. Thanks for watching. If you appreciated this video, please give us a thumbs up. Our resources are down there. And please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.